I feel like Mike Tyson just knocked out all of my teeth. It's been almost a year since I played Black Ops 3 on the Xbox 360 and apparently I've forgotten just how difficult it really was. My adventure started on Shadows of Evil where my goal was to first to reach round 100 and then maybe push up my personal best of round 118. Before we can get there though, we need to make it through the first few rounds. And yes, I know this game looks like a drop baby, but it doesn't just look that way, it plays like that too. Firstly, the zombies act similarly to World of War zombies where they almost exclusively go for windmill attacks which can down you very quickly and they've also got this weird sticky quality where it's harder to get away from them. Like I get it, I'm thicker than a bowl of oatmeal and everyone wants a taste but it gets annoying after a while. Then we've got Mommy Margua who doesn't have the most consistent hitbox in the entire world which can really cause some problems. It's weird, you would think for someone who's played over a thousand hours of this trash that I would be used to it but nope, low rounds especially are so anxiety inducing since one zombie even with Juggernaug has the chance to take you down. So getting good guns as quickly as possible is the highest priority thing that we could be doing right now. Actually, let me correct myself. The highest priority thing we could be doing right now is playing Call of Dragons. Call of Dragons is a fantasy strategy MMORPG game created by the same studio who made Rise of Kingdoms. You'll choose a faction, whether it's Celestials, Goblins, Humans, or any of the other fantastic creatures and build a squad of your favorites to take down the evil dragon alliance so you can conquer the vast and beautiful land of Tamaris. It's set on a huge 3.88 square kilometer map with icy terrain, scorched deserts, huge lakes, and so much more. Battles are now even bigger than ever where you can deploy legions of thousands of units and team up with others to have a one-of-a-kind battlefield experience. There's also some insane hero skills like invisibility, super speed, or instantly healing your units to help out strategize your enemies. You can even use the true dynamic 3 terrain to turn the battle in your advantage, so make sure to use natural barriers like ravine, and rock formations which will help you stay on the attack well still covered. Fellas, come join me in this epic battle. Download Call of Dragons now by going to the description and clicking the first link or the pinned comment. You can also scan this QR code on screen right now and use promo code COD Fantasy, which will unlock special in-game rewards. Use code COD Fantasy, you'll have lots of fun and it helps me out too. Thank you to Call of Dragons for sponsoring this video. Zombies aren't our only danger though because on the tram which takes you around the map and is used to look for the Apothecan sword symbols, you can die. Each route has a specific spot where your character will be pushed into an invisible barrier. If you don't spam jump over that barrier quickly enough or you just get unlucky, it will push you out of the tram and end the game. Believe me, it's happened an embarrassing number of times to me over the years and that trauma is ingrained in my skull forever. By round 7, I finally got the egg so we can begin the process of getting our Apothecan sword and finally open up Pack Punch. The cinematic that plays with the Shadow Man is is definitely the definition of fuck it who cares. Poor soul who worked on that area was probably regretting every life choice they ever made in the three minutes they spent putting that together. Either way it doesn't matter, we're not going back there anytime soon now that I've got the upgraded KRM shotgun. If you're wondering why I'm using this out of all guns, it's the most reliable thing you could use for low rounds. High damage and actually registers all of the bullets hitting a zombie unlike some other guns. Yes, that is kind of an issue on here. Also it's cheap and there's no luck involved since it's a wall gun, you don't really Really need to spin the mystery box for it. Trying to do this egg location was really sketchy though and I was totally bailed out by a lucky insta kill. With the sword in hand now we can start the upgrade process. Talk shit all you want about shadows of evil but I will hear zero slander about the sword. You can however talk shit about the upgrade process since it requires us to kill 7 margwas across 4 different rounds. That's just extra for the sake of being extra and as a fellow messy bitch it's my job to tell you to chill out shadows. Luckily nothing bad happened this time which believe me more vietnam flash backs from that one too. With that said, the Apothecan Sword has been upgraded and all that's left to do is get the Apothecan Servant. I got lucky once again with the Xenomatter dropping really early, plus the guaranteed Margo Heart from just killing a Margo and believe me, we've done a lot of that already. So all that's left is the Hentai Tentacle and would you look at that. Sometimes I don't get this thing until the mid 30s, but literally the first purple pot I opened in this game, it just popped out and made me so happy. I can finally fulfill my lifelong dream of shoving my entire arm inside of an interdimensional squid monster's ass. Don't shame my kinks, I'm not shaming yours. There's one last thing to do though, and it's to assemble the only cop that I trust, the Civil Protector. With our setup finished, it's time to start getting through some rounds. In the past, I've flip-flopped between which strategy I really want to use here. Sometimes I prefer the slower running in circle strats, and other times I use the waterfront strategy like in this game. Basically, you leave the gate to this area closed, and all of the zombies will spawn in in front of you at a pretty fast rate. It's definitely the best strategy on regular Black Ops 3. On here though, it's never worked out 
out too well for me. Oh wait, hold on, there's a mark wedge. Just let me handle this and thank you for dying. Right, so Waterfront strategy relies a lot on you having three guns and rotating them around to get the best use out of the two with the pack punch abilities on them. Ideally, I use turned in deadwire normally for this and you should have expected this by now, but on here, it's not the same. Pack a punch abilities got multiple big updates throughout Black Ops 3's life. The Xbox 360 and the PS3 stopped getting these updates about four months after launch, and even then, sometimes they didn't make the same changes as each other. So on one hand, it means that Blast Furnace is really good, having its pre-patch cooldown timer of about three seconds. On the other hand, it means that Deadwire can only kill three or four zombies and it has a much longer cooldown time. The other ones are mostly unaffected unless I'm missing something small. It still makes a big difference though, since we're all probably used to using Deadwire being the best pack punch ability, and with it being completely useless on here, it throws me off really badly. After stalling for probably way too long, I finally decided on getting turned and to keep my KRM shotgun. Turned is good because you're not really running full hordes together at waterfront, so something like a blast furnace wouldn't be used to its full potential. We're also keeping the shotgun because Mommy Margua isn't quite done with us just yet. Usually you'll get the civil protector on Shadows of Evil since when you call him in, its slam fully takes out a Margwa even with three heads. The civil protector on here does not do that though, but I call him in anyway on Margo rounds because if I do go down, he'll pick me up and I don't lose a quick revive. That's kind of goaded if you ask me and is totally worth the 2000 points. Margos also have a ridiculous amount of health, meaning that I do need something a little bit beefy, kind of like a shotgun to even take it out without needing to buy ammo in the middle of taking it down. And hey, you know what? Things went pretty well for a while. It's round 50 with no downs and I'm feeling pretty good about my odds right now. Then on 58, I decided to be a cheap ass. With only three shots left in my Apothecary Servant, I didn't want to use them or my Alchemical Antithesis Gobble Gum, which would have been free ammo. No, I decided the better option was to run around in a small area and get myself trapped to save one fucking ammo. Truly, my genius knows no limits. My account is named Pain and Suffer for a reason. Luckily, it was the end of the round, so buying perks back wasn't an issue, and I finally got a fourth perk of Speed Cola. I chose that over Stamina because Stam is kind of broken here. I don't have any hard evidence for this at all, but it feels like all you do is run faster and not for any longer than you normally do. Something just feels off to me, and as someone who's played a disgusting amount of zombies in my life, it messes with my rhythm. This video has also been like 60% explaining differences between the versions to you guys because there's literally thousands of small things you wouldn't notice if you weren't playing it for yourself. If for some messed up reason you do want to actually buy this game though, get a sealed copy if you can because it comes with a game download code for Black Ops 1. It doesn't include the DLCs, but on Twitter a few days ago, someone said that the codes were still working when they tried it a couple of months ago. Enough shopping advice, back to suffering for me. On round 63, I took one too many back shots like I'm ready to start up the only fan. Shows you the danger of these zombies though, since I have almost never taken a down like that in regular Black Ops 3. And as a consequence of that, I spent the first few minutes of round 64 grabbing perks with almost no ammo, which is a spot I hate being in. The civil protector bailed me out about five minutes later with a very clutch max ammo, and we could get back to our area in the waterfront. That was a short-lived happiness though, since as on the funny number round of 69, I turned around at the wrong time, and I swear two zombies teleported behind me to trap my ass in. Those zombies deserve their hidden leaf village headbands ASAP because those dudes were ninjas. This also sadly means no more quick revives, making it no surprise that on round 73, my ass got munched up. With that failure, I did pivot to the giant, which is definitely the worst looking out of all the three maps. It's like a low budget PS2 game or like an unfinished version of a Call of Duty game from 2011, not something you'd expect to see in 2015, especially because the Xbox 360 and PS3 were way more capable than this. As much as Shadows of Evil gets memed on, I think the actual textures on here are just worse. It's only missing that goofy filter that Shadows got for some reason. Oh yeah, and the perks have a blue outline to them for actually no reason whatsoever. It, if you can't tell, I'm actually just stalling here about the game because, um, yeah, I none of my games got past around 14 and I played four of them. Really didn't want to admit that one. It was an absolute massacre with all the regular highlights, getting slapped down way too quickly, perks not being the locations I need them to be in for my strategy, and the usual one of just straight up skill issues. Keep in mind I used to have the fucking world record on here and that's what the last video on this game was about. To no one's surprise, I gave up on that and with the frustration in mind, I woke up the next day and decided to play Dare Eisenrock instead. After a failed attempt where looking back at what the fuck was I doing, 
going, I went back to basics a little bit. Only build the storm bow without having to worry about the wolf bow since it's pretty shit anyway. That's easier said than done though since I haven't mentioned it yet, but my Xbox 360 controller is broken. The right thumbstick has a huge dead zone on it, meaning I can't aim very precisely. It makes the storm bow upgrade a huge pain in the ass since I need precise aiming to shoot the arrows of the wood pyres outside of the map. Aside from looking like I've got Parkinson's, the upgrade process was pretty easy actually. Usually I have issues with this in some way, shape, or form, but I didn't this time. One thing I will say is that you won't be seeing me get the Ragnarok DG4s because those things cause a lot of crashes. Even as early as round 30 I've seen it happen, it's the same reason that I'm not using the death machine either. You kind of need to work around what this game is capable of handling. Something simple like even pausing for too long usually results in weird shit happening like permanent frame drops, visual glitches, or once again more crashes. By round 14 I've got the storm bow in hand and it's time to mix things up. In the past, like in my round 90 game on here, I've trained around the death ray area because it's the most open area of the map. Some people would say it's the courtyard, but it has too many spawn points for my liking. While that process works, it's really slow and I do inevitably end up taking downs. The mystery box also gave us the green and gold colored ray gun, which is always a sign of good luck. But anyway, so knowing that my old strategy has its limits, I tried an old camping strategy. Sit near the teleporter at the rocket test site. It has a few spawn points close by that makes the spawns fairly fast, but not enough to make it feel overwhelming. And that's what I spend the next four hours doing, so let's fast forward to the end of round 60 where I got slapped like I was back in private school again for an insanely quick down. Leaving to go get Juggernog was a nightmare too because there was a panzer waiting for me very patiently. Very lucky for me though, it was a hellhound round which meant as long as I avoided the panzer, there was no more downs. Let's just take a second though to look at how much fucking health this panzer has. I've been saying it since the release of this map. Der Eisenrock is a great map held back by the fact of how brokenly strong the Panzer is. There is no reason it should have this much health to survive 300 bullets from an upgraded HVK with double tap plus around 50 Stormbow shots. Even still, he was once again sent away like that sibling that you don't talk about anymore and I went back for Speed Cola and guess what happened? I took another down. I got my perks back again, went down to the teleporter to get to the rocket tie setting area and before I could even finish teleporting there, I downed again. That might have been the most unfair and unlucky down in my 13 years of playing zombies. In 5 minutes, we went from flawless to no more quick revives. We can still use the wonder fizz machine to get quick revives so at the end of the round I did spin for a few more. Usually the odds for this are super low, probably about a 1% chance. Which obviously means that I got it within 10 spins. It didn't stop history from repeating itself with me taking another another down on round 69 because I wasn't willing to use my alchemical antithesis when will I ever learn. Now I actually agree with my parents when they call me a disappointment. Of course I also got quick revive again within 3 spins. I'm starting to think the odds were never adjusted for this because that is some crazy luck. Round 72 you know what happened here, I don't even need to explain it. That's not even peak humiliation though because with one zombie left I decided to spin for quick revive again. While recording for these I'm usually double tasking on my PC. PC, so I'm only using one hand to walk over to the Wonder Fizz. Somehow the zombie trapped me in a corner and slapped me five times before I could react or my fireworks could pop from the HVK. I need another one year break from this fucking game, I can't do it anymore. Thank you for watching, you're very cute, I love you, Bye bye